people ask, where do you get your ideas? Well, right here. All of this is my Martian landscape. Somewhere in this room is an African veldt. Just beyond, perhaps, is a small Illinois town where I grew up. And I'm surrounded on every side by my magician's toy shop. I'll never starve here. I just look around, find what I need, and begin. I'm Ray Bradbury, and this is... Well then, right now, what shall it be? Out of all this, what do I choose to make a story? I never know where the next one will take me. And the trip? Exactly one half exhilaration, exactly one half terror. to the south room, please. think this is wise, Charles. All your money and valuables, why here? Why not let them remain in the bank? What I have, I wish to hold, St. John. Close to me, to the end. As you wish, Charles. I only hope it'll be safe. It will be. Rest assured. Attendance here, Richard, is prompted by one of two motives. Plan A, to see if I'm dead. Plan B, if I am unhappily still living, to touch me for some money. Well, with your bank account, what's a few pounds either way? And blood is thicker than water, old man. I'm not your old man, and I hate to think I'm your brother. Goodbye. Old Ebenezer Scrooge. Why don't you add bar humbug while you're at it? Was that St. John Court I just saw leaving? It was. Why are you seeing our lawyer? Can they cut me out of the will? Assuming you were in it to start with. What are you up to? I'm busy dying, if you must know. Then what's... Um... I'm building my coffin. You can't die, Charles. Would I have to hate, then? 
And brilliant inventor though I may not be, this doesn't look like coffin building. But it is a very special, fine, incredibly creative coffin. Well, wouldn't it be cheaper to buy one, Alcha? I mean, I know you're a tight wad, but this is ridiculous. Nowhere in the world is there a coffin like this. No one in the world has ever thought of, let alone built, an incredible coffin of this sort. Don't meddle! You oath! Charles, <clears throat> finally flipped, building a rocket to fly him to the funny farm in the sky. It's too big for a coffin. It must be eight or nine feet long. So if it is a coffin, it's obviously not for you, old man. No? <laughs> it was too thick, too high. Maybe for someone of 300 pounds or more, but not for a decrepit old bag of bones like you. <laughs> uh, what's this? The lid? Who ever heard of a coffin with a window? What's the good of that? Do you want to look out of it for the next 10,000 years? I might have had a mind to. Tapes. A tape player. Could be. Well, I'll be damned. I hope so. When do you leave, Richard? For truth to tell, old boy, thought I might stay for a while, give you the pleasure of my company. Do you mind? Yes. Because it must be quite lonely if you here rattling around on your own with just that silly little tin can for company. Some company I can do without, thank you. Yes. Yes, you never did get over it, did you, all those years ago now? Please go, Richard. If you fancy the younger man, you can't blame me for that. Girl in her twenties and you nearly fifty was never going to work, was it? Leave my house. Oh, yes, my house. You never miss a chance of ramming that down my throat, do you? It was left to both of us, if you remember. And remember, you sold up to me. Gambling debt, wasn't it? Had to stop some friendly villain nailing your feet to the floor, as I recall. Oh, no question of my dear brother giving the money. Oh, no. Mr. Firm but Fair had to screw me and take me for Take! Every... Take! You're the taker all your miserable life. Our mother, money, clothes, booze, cars. And then, Angela, you could never forgive me for Angela, could you? Get out, Richard. Leave you to it, old boy. Get my bag out of the car, plonk myself in the usual place. Just fancy waiting around. See what you're up to. Dearly beloved. Double, damn you! Double! Long away. He's a miser, you know. No use for his loot. But he won't let me get near it. Because I know how to enjoy life. He's never forgiven me for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left turn. One, two, three. Right turn, front door. Yes, I reckon you're making your exit just in time. You're barking mad, old man. Barking. Help yourself to another drink, Richard. Son of the over the yard arm in eight hours. <laughs> Eighty-five yards to the clearing. <coughs> Richard, could you come up a moment, please?
fact is, Richard, I fear the end is nigh. <clears throat> as the Padres say, time to let bygones. No use scrapping all the way to the grave. Lend a hand this uh, lid. For your coffin, any time. Oh. So, dear brother, isn't she beautiful? My last, my most wonderful invention. What's so bloody marvellous about this heap of junk, anyway? Watch. Open sesame. Oh, nice, thank you. Cheers. The whole caboodle is just about the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Dumb? Well, what use is it? Are you going to sell a million? No way. You're dead, and you're in it, and you're dumb. Dumb. And no one's going to miss you. You always had a bi affection, didn't you? Never had any real friends. They were just after your money. Just like Angela. Angela never loved you. Get out. Get out, Richard. What? Get out. Oh. Get out. The truth hurts. Daddy's been refused. Keep this to ourselves for the time being. Sell the bits for something. Throw you in as well. Might make a few quid. You, uh, you collected my brother's uh, body. Uh, the remains, yes. You haven't come down to pick out the casket as yet, and I thought... Oh, just an ordinary basket, uh, casket, thank you. Simple pine? Yes. Your pine is fine. And the service, sir? Oh, no services, thank you. No, he, he would have preferred it that way. Charles asked me to read this missive containing details of his will. Fine, fine. <clears throat> uh, he thanks you for taking care of the funeral arrangements and for ensuring his burial in what he describes as the Charles Braining Pomp and Circumstance coffin. No doubt you understand the reference by the family joke. And... Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, item one, the aforesaid coffin now being underground and occupied, Charles wishes that you should yet be able to profit from the invention. Uh, drawings and circuitry details have been left with me. Uh, uh, they're in a separate envelope. Item two, the house is left to you. Yeah, well, of course, we were, we were very, um, very um, close. However, I should advise you that this part of the legacy is not as advantageous as it might seem. Well, huh? I fear that death duties payable on the estate are punitively high. 
They may absorb the total present value of the property. <laughs> Charming. However, Charles provides an item three. He does. All monies and valuables within the house are left to you. Oh, nice. Nice. Have you been round this place? Mother Hubbard was never in it. Mr. Charles further authorizes me to inform you of certain banking processes which I undertook on his behalf just prior to his death. Okay, go on, go on. Well, Mr. Charles's instructions, I withdrew from the bank the entire balance. Which was? Rather in excess of £750,000. Good Lord! He also instructed me to secure the safe deposit box for him. In it were items of jewellery, uh, once purchased with a young lady in mind, I believe. Uh, these were insured for £550,000. I must advise you, Mr Richard, that to the best of my knowledge, this fortune must be within the house. It's the most irregular state of affairs, but there we are. Your brother would have it no other way. And that's really all there is to it, except that he closes in the following manner. Cheerio, then Richard. No hard feelings. In the grave, there is forgiveness. May you live long to enjoy your yo-ho-ho -ho bottles of rum. Right, you old skin vent. Where's the beer money? Where is it? Take it all with you. Ha! Sorry, Charles, but this needs looking into. Secret compartment for the loot. I'll be bound. Open sesame. This coffin begins to make sense. <laughs> huh? Place body in coffin. Music will... Uh. All right, Charles. I'll be your guest. Music will I work. Dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's it, folks. I'll be with you again in the morning. <laughs> The family is gathering for the funeral. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Dearly beloved, we are gathered here on this sad day to pay our respects to one who will be sorely missed from the center of our lives. That's Charles's voice. The old son of a gun is delivering a funeral sermon on himself. I mean, really. In his life, he was a cad. <laughs> A bounder and a no good, a villain, a terror, and a layabout fiend. Oh, the cameras, he didn't think much of himself, did he? I mean, <laughs> so it is with great relief that we finally say goodbye Bye. to Bye. this awful man. Yes, yeah, awful man. Richard Bradley. Richard Bradley. Yes. Richard Bradley. Hold on. That's the wrong... Yes, indeedy. Surprise, surprise. 
Stop it, Charles. There's enough of this joke. You always were a curious devil, Richard. I counted on that. If a bottle red drink me, you drank it. If a box red eat me, you ate whatever was in the box. And if a box maybe contained some loot, well, now, I just knew that if I put instructions in the coffin to start music, place body in coffin, you couldn't resist playing the body, playing dead. Well played, Richard. Well done. And now, on with the funeral of Richard. Stop it, Charles. Enough. Stop it. Born in 1935, my brother, younger by some 20 years, Richard Brenning, never was, never... Never would be, anyway. A gaseous cipher, a bother, a pest, a borrower, and never a lender. He is well out of the world. We celebrate his passing. Work on the lid. Break the glass. No tantrums, please, brother. Calmness, serenity, quiet, sweet, sweet calm. There, now. Ashes to ashes. Well, Richard, I doubt very much we'll meet in the next world. Requiem cut in pace. Dead man's chest. Dead man's chest. Chest. Bye, bye, Richard. Bye.